Mr. Davidson is now recognized for five minutes. <clears throat> thank you, Chairman. Uh, Madam Secretary, thank you for being here today. And um, I just want to highlight a couple of the activities of uh, FSOC. For the last two years, FSOC has made digital assets one of its top priorities. Do you believe that it is appropriate for FSOC to list digital assets among its top priorities, given the relative size of the market? Well, the market is relatively small, and I believe the annual report states that. And um, the connections are not enormous to the banking system, although um, role involvement in digital assets did play some role in the banking problems we had last March, um, particularly with respect to, to um, Signature Bank and to Silvergate. So there are concerns along those lines. Well, but in, in that there sense is the potential for, for example, stable coins that we have um, we've made recommendations to Congress require regulation. Um, they will could, they if could. If the secretary will suspend, if you could please exit the dais for members. Thank you. Um, we can continue. Thank sorry. you. Um, st stable coin. Th there is no appropriate regulatory framework. We've, cer we've certainly been working become, on that. It'd be great to get it across the finish line. Well, I appreciate that, and we've tried to work on a bipartisan basis with the committee um, to see legislation enacted. And the, so the concern would be that there's some systemic risk to the market because of the introduction of digital assets. And you referenced uh, Silvergate. They didn't pose a sig uh, systemic risk to the market. In fact, they wound no, down in a very orderly fashion with no risk to the market. Not true of Silicon Valley Bank, but that was interest rate risk, not uh, digital assets. Signature, on the other hand, there was an FSOC meeting on Saturday, and on Sunday, the assets of Signature Bank were seized, and uh, former Congressman Barney Frank, whose portrait hangs right there, um, uh, former chairman of this committee, said that uh, it was because they were banking crypto, not because they were insolvent. So uh, it kind of highlights, is there a coordinated effort because there's a disfavored industry like uh, digital assets, or is there a coordinated effort because there is actually systemic risk? Well, FSOC has recommended to Congress that um, stable coins require a regulatory framework. No stable coin at this point may yet have achieved the scale that would pose a systemic risk, but certainly that could happen if a stable coin were widely used for payments. And you have the classic run risk that's associated with that if the um, stable coin proceeds are not invested in a secure and utterly safe well, manner. this is the case. And we've there seen this. We've seen this happen with similar types of. Um, it's a. It's essentially a banking type of. It's not. Product. It's not fractional reserve banking, and those banks are regulated. Stable coins uh, certify that they have one dollar of government-backed securities uh, for one dollar uh, um, of tokens issued. It, they don't and always certify that. No, they, the, the three that are regulated in the United States by the New York Department of Financial Services, or four actually, do certify that, and they are state regulated. The one that doesn't, that the, the Treasury Department and others seem unwilling to address by providing clarity in our market, don't certify that. Tether is a time bomb, and it is offshore, and it's the only thing functional, frankly. Everyone is moving offshore because we can't uh, agree to regulate our own markets. And frankly, there are people that really would love to regulate the market. There just always seems to be an excuse not to.